This video is based on a true story. These stories are based on real life incidents. Please respect the family and friends of individuals featured on this channel. Remember to be courteous in your comments. Many details of these true stories are gory and frightening. If you do not want to hear these types of details, please do not watch this video series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes place near Grand Mesa, Colorado, and is more of a story about a freakishly large bear than an aggressive bear. Old Clubfoot, as the bear had been known by, wandered the area dining off of local provisions that were not his own. He was a gentle giant, I guess, but didn't understand the implications of his gluttonous pursuits. In the 1880s, ranchers near Grand Mesa, Colorado were noticing cattle that had been killed by a grizzly bear. The bear had always eaten his fill, then moved on, and never returned to the same place. He was a very large, smart bear, and hard to predict for the ranchers. In the year 1890, the bear was caught in a trap, which was the prevailing way to catch a bear long enough to be shot. The trapper would be permitted the opportunity to dispatch the bear while it was encumbered in the trap, limiting damage to the trapper. A large grizzly was caught in this trap and managed to get away, minus three of his toes. This identified the bear at all future cattle predation as his signature two-toed track was present. His track resembled a club, and that was the origin of his nickname. In 1902, a small hunting party had decided to hunt near Grand Mesa, as was common at the time, as the fishing and hunting were excellent. Franklin Mangus, who was a spry 61-year-old man, decided to stay back at camp, as he was relatively new to hunting. Mangus took his 30-30 deer hunting rifle and stayed close to camp, looking for a deer for camp meat. Franklin was walking along a trail near camp when he heard a loud woof behind him. He slowly turned and felt the hair on the back of his neck stand erect. A very large grizzly bear was walking toward him in a non-threatening manner. Franklin froze in fear and wasn't sure what he should do. The bear peacefully strode past him, but when it was about 20 yards away, Franklin decided to shoot it. The report of the rifle rang out, and man just expected to see the massive Bruin piled up. Instead, he watched as the big bear just ran off. Franklin knew he couldn't just leave the bear and started trailing the tracks. He followed the bear several miles and was crossing a stream to find the bear's tracks on the other side to continue the pursuit. Suddenly he saw the giant rise from the bushes a little over a hundred feet from him on his hind legs. Franklin quickly shouldered his rifle and fired. The bullet found its mark in the bear's shoulder. He worked the lever on his firearm and fired again. At that point, the bear turned and retreated into the nearest cover of willow bushes. Franklin worked his way around the willow stand, and the bear exited just about 25 yards from him. The bear lowered its head and charged the man. Franklin worked the action of his rifle and fired as quickly as he could, dumping bullets into the bear to stop the attack. The bear fell and ceased its movement, and the hunter realized the struggle had ended, at least for now. Franklin left the location and returned to camp to tell the other hunters of the encounter. He ate dinner and discussed the bear's location to recruit help in recovering the animal for harvest. The recovery party hiked the long distance to the location Franklin indicated the carcass would be, but were surprised when they got there. The bear was gone. They started looking around the area to locate any sign of where the bear had gone and followed his tracks about a hundred yards to a nearby willow grove. Franklin fired his twelfth shot into the back of the bear's skull to finally bring the ordeal to an end. The remarkable part of the story is the reported size of Old Clubfoot. He weighed in at around 1,600 pounds, which is a gigantic bear for an interior grizzly. When the hunters looked his hide over, they counted 12 shots that penetrated his thick protective hide, but only two of the bullets penetrated the protective fat layer beneath his hide. Old Clubfoot's hide measured 8 foot 4 inches squared, which means from nose to tail and front paw to front paw. The massive bear's hide is still in the possession of Franklin's family and was temporarily displayed at various points of interest in surrounding towns as well as the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1903. 
I hope you enjoyed our episode today. And before we leave, I want to do a quick shout out to one of our favorite supporters, the YouTube channel Cryptids Canada. If you enjoy tales about Bigfoot, Dogman, or any of the paranormal experiences that people report, it's a wonderful channel for you. So I recommend checking it out. Have a great day, everyone.